Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as we race across the finish line for the UK premiere of Journey to Le Mans. Now, this is a sport, uh, motorsports, obviously a male dominated sport. So, we've got a female on the driving seat for the documentary. So, how did that, what inspired you? I've had a passion for motorsports since I, well, since I could walk really. Um, I remember my mother um, was always involved with motorbikes and just the, the thrill of it, the smell of it, everything just always excited me. And um, I was lucky enough to have been to Silverstone a couple of times. Um, and the excitement in the pits and what really goes on sort of behind the scenes really interested me and I wanted to bring it to life and I was lucky enough my first film to, to do just that. So. so how did you, have you got any experience in filmmaking? So I mean it was a daunting prospect. It certainly was. I can't say it was the easiest um, subject to to tackle for my first, you know, my first film because after all the actual challenges of making it you know, it, being part of a racing team that is so choreographed, you know, everything has to be exact, everything has to be perfect, everything's choreographed to the to the second with pit stops and with aero, with, with weight. So obviously the challenges of that and the challenges of getting into the sport, the very male dominated sport, obtaining the right passes, working with the ACO and the authorities and things. But in fairness, everybody has been fantastic. It's a it's it evokes passion in the people um, and I think I just quoted Mark Webber from the film when I said that actually um, but it does it really it brings out the passion in people and I wanted to bring that to life so what's interesting as well is you know for a, a general filmmaker who's working to a script when you're making a documentary of this nature oh, where yeah. you're going on a journey yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't know what to how you how, how you can't plan no um, I have to say I've been very lucky, incredibly lucky. Um, I like to say that the man upstairs should at least take an assistant director credit because um, in fairness, to have started out um, with a team that has never come more than fifth, um, who on occasions haven't crossed the finish line, um, but I always had the, the hope, the faith to just go ahead with it and I couldn't have had a better season. Things couldn't have fallen into place better, you know. And even with, you know, thank the Lord, Simon's crash didn't end badly. Um, but the drama that that brings, you know, Mark Genet incident, the season is a rocky story. It's a, it, if I'd have scripted it, no one would have believed it. You are the man behind Jota. Oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm the man who drives with them and puts some money in and stuff like that. But uh, no, Jota's very much... Uh, uh, it sounds cliche, but it's a team effort. You know, there's 20 odd guys there. So, yeah. and this year, it seems an incredible year for this documentary to be made because you, it's been a tremendous achievement for you guys, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Charlotte was very lucky in what happened. Um, it didn't feel very lucky at the start of the year at Silverstone, but you know, we had some drama there, and then we had some drama more at Spa, and then obviously Loic's crash with Audi meant that we didn't have Martin. So. You know, everything that happened during the course of the year, if you'd have written it in a movie script, you'd go, ah, oh, no, it's too over the top. So, um, yeah, it was a dramatic year, which really helps the film. What was interesting when I saw the beginning, well, I've seen all the, the, the film, but um, your story that you were saying that when you were 16 years old, you were told that you would never amount to anything. And, and I think your, this story in particular shows a testament to your tenacity, really. It, has it... Been, has this film allowed you to reflect back on actually what you have been able to achieve with with a team of people? Um, has it? Oh, I suppose you do in quiet moments. I mean, I don't really think a huge amount about the past. I'm always too busy thinking about what I'm going to do next, to be honest. But yeah, in quiet moments, you sort of sit there and the trophy's obviously still at home. And I'm sat there and looking at it and going, oh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah, you do. Did you have any uh, hesitations when uh, Charlotte came to you and said she wanted to make a documentary? Uh, yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah, because I didn't think it was going to be very interesting for many people. Obviously, you got fans of Le Mans. But even fans of Le Mans, you know, you see that uh, Audi did it so well with Truth in 24. And obviously, Le Mans, you know, is a pretty good film. And so to, you know, follow us, and obviously us being us, we don't think we're particularly interesting to anyone else. So, yeah, I had a lot of trepidation. And I, you know, I said to her, you know, by all means do it, but how the hell is it going to work? And uh, yeah, she just said, well, leave that to me, I'll sort it out. And here we are, so she obviously did. Have you seen the film yourself? I saw a rough cut about uh, uh, maybe a couple of months ago, so apparently it's very different now. And, and for, for you, Le Mans, why is Le Mans so special? 
because it's hard. Um, it's hard and it's an event. You know, there's, well, we all know, you know, 280,000 people turn up and to be part of that. I, I liken it to, you know, if you like football, it's getting a chance to play in the World Cup final. That's why. The interesting, what, what was nice as well that I saw about, what the, the, again, the documentary captures, is there's this kind of festival spirit about that day. And, um, and is that something that you, you also enjoy about that? There's this just big community of, of racing lovers and everybody's having a good time. Yeah, it's the atmosphere, you know. Uh, unlike a football match, everybody's friends. You know, some people cheer on Audi, some people whatever. It doesn't matter. They just enjoy, you know, basically getting drunk and watching the cars go around. And they do that, uh, you know, for a long time. So most people start milling out kind of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time. And, uh, and then they hang around until, well, after we've gone, I think. So. Well, I think this story for you is particularly dramatic, isn't it? Can you tell us a little bit more about your story? Well, yeah, it was uh, well. It was quite a short journey to Le Mans for me, but um, no, I think uh, it was yeah, amazingly uh, exciting few days for me, and it was a uh, one of those weeks where at the start of the week I was absolutely gutted that uh, I wasn't going to be racing at Le Mans, and yeah, I'd made my debut last year with Jota, and uh, we had a strong strong debut uh, there, and uh, yeah, I was I was really wanting to go back and really wanting to compete, so uh, yeah, when I wasn't there, it was absolutely gutting and. Uh, to get the call on the Wednesday night was um, so exciting. <laughs> I uh, I just couldn't believe it, and I was just really, really excited and ready to go. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a rush to get out there, but um, I uh, yeah I didn't get much sleep on the Wednesday night because uh, I was getting all my stuff. And I had to go to the airport, had a 6 a.m. flight, so I had a not the greatest preparation, but um, I managed to get everything I needed to get done on the Thursday in terms of the seat fit, working with the team. Then we had the night qualifying. I got my kind of uh, three night laps to qualify for the race. And uh, yeah, then I went into the race pretty much without any practice. So it was uh, a crazy race. I mean, the start, I was in, in my first stint, it rained on the first lap. And uh, yeah, it was absolutely torrential. There was cars going off everywhere. Um, yeah, I just wanted to keep the car on the track. So, um, and then from then on, we were, we were playing a bit of catch up. We and we came through really strong. The car was very strong in the uh, in the wet, uh, in the dry. Sorry, and uh, we through the night we were just going flat out to, to make up the time. We'd had because we'd had a few issues at the start of the race with the light panel coming loose, so we'd had some time in the pits. And uh, yeah, it didn't. It was a real, uh, you know, really exciting race. It was one of those races where we we were always on the attack, always pushing, and we kept moving up the order. And it got to Sunday morning and. And we realised that we were up to P5 and we realised there's a good chance we can get on the podium here. And uh, yeah, we were just pushing as much as possible every time I was in the car. And uh, yeah, the, to the final, when Harry got in the car for his final stint and he, he got the car into second, um, it was a few seconds behind the leader, I knew that we had a chance to win. And uh, yeah, I, when I got in the car, I was very nervous, but that create, made me very focused. And uh, that final stint was uh, one of the best stints I did of the whole race. So. Uh, and then I managed to come out one second ahead of the TDS car, which, yeah, was so close after all the, after 24 hours to be split by one second at the final pit stop um, was phenomenal. But yeah, the last few laps were very emotional, and uh, you know I just wanted to bring the car home for the team. Jota have done a fantastic job with the car. Um, Harry and Simon both did a fantastic job, and uh, you know. They, they, I just felt they all really deserved it, and uh, you know, I, I just wanted to, to cross the line for them, and uh, it was a really emotional experience, and um, yeah, one of the biggest races I've won. Um, so certainly, to be part of this team and to to get a class victory at Le Mans is something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Congratulations, first of all, on a successful year. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's certainly a roller coaster season, that's for sure. Say, what's it been like as well being part of a documentary, particularly this year, because it's captured such an achievement, hasn't it? I, I think they couldn't have picked a better year to do it. I mean, it, I don't know if it's luck or judgment or whatever, but um, certainly it's, you know, there's a massive roller coaster of highs and lows and everything in between. Um, so to be able to look back on it tonight is going to be really special because I haven't seen the film. You haven't seen it? No, I haven't. So it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be really fun to, 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 to watch it all back. But um, like I say, they couldn't have picked a better year. And for uh, somebody who's uh, uninitiated like myself, can you explain a little bit more why Le Mans is such a special race? Well, it's a whole Formula One season in one race. It's, it's been going for nearly 100 years now. There's 250,000 spectators that turn up through it. And I think 100 million 
um, that watch it on TV. So all around the world, it's a, it's a pretty special race. I think it's it's, what, it's part of the Triple Crown with the Monaco Grand Prix and the Indianapolis 500 within the motorsport world. So it's a race that everyone wants to win. So to come in in my first year and win it is just uh, mind-boggling, to be honest. And is it, I kind of got the feeling as well, this is very much, it, it is a team sport, even though you're driving as individuals. It's much more of a team sport than what I'm used to. I've come from single seaters going up the ladder towards Formula One. Um, and that's just one driver, that's just me in the car. Once the lights go out, it's all down to me to, to do the business basically. And if I win, it's down to me. And if I lose, it's down to me. Obviously, there's still a team aspect about it, but. Um, it's very much more individual, whereas in, in the endurance world, you have three drivers, you have 35 pit stops during the race, so it's much more of a team effort. And I've, I've really actually enjoyed that team aspect of it a lot more this year because, you know, there's, there's a big camaraderie within the team. It's a massive like, family team, and hopefully that will come across in the, in the documentary. And uh, how have you felt as well being a part of that, the, uh, and, and being a part of having a documentary made about this? Because you guys have already got enough to think about anyway. So then to be asked to interview and, and, and participate and add your feelings, it, it, was that something that you were hesitant in? Um, I, was, I was always uh, looking forward to it because I thought that, you know, if, as long as we could do the job on the track, it would make for an exciting documentary. But... I think Charlotte and her team were, were learning with us along the way and certainly at the start there was a few times where you, you need to do some interviews but you, you, you know you're more worried about what was going on in the race and everything like that um, but they were very good at blending into the background as well and doing their own you know their own thing and just taking us away when when the time was right but certainly towards the end of the morning when uh, you know there's maybe an hour to go of a 24-hour race and we're leading the way. The sort of last thing you want really is a camera in your face, but this, as a racing driver, that's something you have to deal with anyway. Um, but we just have that, had that a little bit more this season by having a documentary, but I, I think it's going to be you know, a special, a special thing to look back on in, in, a, in, in a few years' time for sure. And, uh, and like I say, to, to go there and win it on my first time is amazing. So to, to have this as a, as a sort of memory of it um, is, is pretty cool. Now, you're di director of photography on the, on the documentary. That seems to me quite a challenge when you're filming motor racing, it, it, was it? Absolutely. It's, um, I mean, a lot of what you're doing is, uh, I hate the phrase, but it's actuality. You've got to be there in a the moment, trying to pick up as moment as you can to tell the story. So you're not really directing a storyboard as such. You're allowing the story to unfold in front of you and making sure you get the elements you need to then tell it off on the big screen. And thankfully for us, we had an amazing story to tell. You know, we couldn't have scripted it any better if we tried, which is, yeah, that, that was good for us. But uh, yeah, you're, you're working with a first-time director, so I would imagine she's very reliant upon you and your knowledge and experience of, of, of what you're going to capture in frame. Um, did that help liberate you actually as as a DOP because you had the freedom to make the decisions that you knew would be the right ones? Uh, absolutely, actually, yeah, very much so. It's a pleasure working with Charlotte because exactly that reason. She's um, to get this far as a first-time director. She's obviously incredibly. Um, what's the right word? Um, passionate, passionate and has that you know tenaciousness to, to get through. That's what I mean, tenacious. Um, but also, she, she's big enough to understand that she doesn't know all the answers. So we, we had some long discussions about the way things should be, um, and. She'd put across the point of view and we'd talk around it and I'd explain sometimes that wouldn't work, sometimes, oh, actually, that's a better way, you know. Um, but she's always open to our ideas. And not, not just myself, but my, my business partner, Adam, as well, very much part of that. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great collaboration, which uh, yeah, really helped and allowed us to spread our wings a bit more as well, which is always nice. Um, the difference between when you're capturing motorsport, I would think, compared to what we're doing now, it's a documentary, there's elements, it's got to be cinematic. Lighting is so important to what you're capturing so you haven't got the liberty of being able to you know set up lovely shots so what were how what were the challenges of that considering you've got changing weather that you've got to deal with well we've got a nice big fairy thing in the sky and we just try and use that as best we can really and that's all we can do um, but you know no one likes filming an overcast day or a rainy day the camera gets wet I get wet that's no good um, but actually looking back there was I think majority of the days it was nice sunny days, um, so you just use the light as best you can, really, and that's all you can do. I mean, we shot a lot of high speed as well, um, but again, so the high speed, you need lots of light, obviously, for high speed. Um, we just work as best you can with what you got, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. 
but it's all about just finding the right position to get the light working for you.